we have a repository set up, we have a model class, and we have a file with data that needs to be persisted to the database. So we're gonna do just that in this video where we're gonna take the author file, get all the author information, and post them as rows into the Cassandra database. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be doing all of the author or just select number, at least we get this working and then we can pick how much we wanna save, all right? So here is my um, author entity. And uh, I have this start uh, method, which is basically gonna be running through this list of um, author data in my data dump, and then creating these author entities and persisting them, all right? So my data dump is over here. Okay, it's in my downloads directory. And um, don't really wanna put this in the code, but at the same time, I don't wanna hard code this as well. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create a property in my properties file. And I'm gonna call this, um, let's call this author dot, let me actually flip this around, data dump dot location dot author. And uh, I'm going to give this the name of the location of this this file. Okay, so, gonna, so this is going to be this path over here. It can be somewhere else, wherever you have kept it. I'm just going to put this over here. The idea is uh, rather than hard code the path, I'm going to put this in a property file and have the code read from the property file rather than rather than hard coding. It makes it easier. Right? It's a configuration we want to be keeping that aside from the code and having this be true configuration. So um, what's the name of the file? The name of the file is this guy, Well, dumps author, all right? This is gonna be different for you, all right? What you're gonna be doing is not downloading this file from uh, the Open Library API data dump. You're gonna be downloading the file uh, in the link provided in the description. You're gonna have one uh, author dump excuse me, and one uh, work stump. You're gonna download that, put this somewhere in your location, in your hard disk, and then use that path over here, right? So um, let me actually put this like this. Uh, author is gonna be over here, and then works is gonna be pretty much the same path for me, except that the file name is different. Just the word is different, works. Everything else is the same, okay? All right, so whatever name you've you have saved this as, and whatever path you have saved this as, put this over here, datadump.location.author and .works, okay? Now I can access this by using a at value annotation, okay? I'm gonna put a private string uh, author dump location, and then I'm gonna have a private string works dump location, okay? So there are gonna be two files, uh, so two paths to it, and then there is gonna be a value that you can set over here. I'm gonna create datadump.location.author, not literally that value, so I'm gonna put this uh, spring expression language thingy over here. So that's what's getting that value, and then this is this value, okay? Essentially what I'm doing is I created uh, a property in my application.properties, application.yaml, and I'm reading that value here and I'm saying, hey Spring, get me those values and uh, populate these member variables so that it's available for me. And now here, uh, it'll be there for me to use when I'm trying to read the file. I wanna read the file, all right? So if I were to do, let's verify that we've got this. I'm just gonna print the author dump location and uh, the other one should be there. If, if this one loads, the other one should load as well. Uh, let's see if it's printed that. Here it is, right? It's printed the value, so it's getting the value from the configuration. All right, cool, so we don't have to hard code this anymore. Now what I wanna do is create a method here called init authors, okay? So I'm gonna be, uh, there's gonna be a private wide authors. So this is going to take the job of initializing all the author values into the database, right? I'm going to have this called from the start method. I'm going to say init authors, 
and then I'm guessing there will be an init works method. Okay, so this is how it is going to do the stuff. I'm going to have a private wired init works as well. So I have two methods which is going to get called from post construct. So it's going to do two different things. First is going to initialize the authors and second is going to initialize the works. All right, so what does init, init authors look like? The first thing I'm going to do is get the path, path.get of the string location, which is in this case, the author dump location. Okay, and I'm going to get this into a path variable. This is the path of the author dump. And now what I'm going to do is read this line by line. Okay, so I want to do this line by line so that I can get each line and each line is going to send out a record to Astra, to Cassandra to save this thing. All right, so what I'm going to do is I think it's the files, I'm going to use the NIO API, files.lines of the path is going to give me a stream. Let's see, um, let's save this as a local variable. There's going to be a stream, I'm going to call this lines. This needs to, this needs to try. I'm going to do try with resource. Okay, so I'm going to try with this guy. Okay, and I'm going to catch any exceptions. I think this is the IO exception. And uh, what do I do when there's an exception? I'm just going to, I just do e.print stack trace and move on, right? So now I have a try with resources. It's going to get this thing and uh, catch errors right there. It's a new syntax. If you aren't using it, you should use it. Try with resources is pretty cool. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to each line. So I have a stream of lines, right? So this, these, this is uh, lines is a stream. So I'm going to get for each one, I'm going to do a bunch of things, okay? One of the things that I have to do is construct the author object. Okay, first, read the line, read and parse the line, construct the author object, persist using repository, right? This is the plan. We need to do this for each and every line that we have in the author's dump, okay? That's the idea, okay? So how do I read and parse the line? Now we have the line, which is a string, right? So this one's a string. Now if I were to go to uh, the file data itself, let's see what this looks like. All right, so this is the works data. So what I'm gonna do is uh, just do vi and uh, open the author's file again, okay? So what you're going to have here is uh, a bunch of stuff before that you don't care about, right? You just want the, essentially the first curly brace is what you're interested in, okay? So you you don't need all this stuff, okay? You can get rid of this. And this from the first curly brace onwards to the end of the file is your JSON blob. I want to be able to construct a JSON object from that blob and then use that to populate the author um, author data, right? So what I'm gonna do is find the position of that first curly brace in this line, okay? Each one of these is a line that I get over here when I'm parsing this, right? Each one of these is a line that I get over here. So I'm going to find the first curly brace and then where did this go? Over here, okay? Position of the first curly brace and I'm gonna do substring of that so that I get just this JSON object or JSON string and then I'm going to create a JSON object from that. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the position, right? So this is a, let's say line dot index off. I need the first curly brace, right? This is going to be, give me the index and I'm going to get from there to the end of the line. So here's what I'm going to do, line dot substring off line dot index off. Okay, so this is going to give me the JSON string. Okay, this is the JSON string. So this is basically this part. This 
highlighted part, right? It's gonna get the position of this curly brace and it's gonna get a substring from there. So it's gonna give me this JSON part. And now what I need to do is use the JSON API to create a JSON object from it, right? So I'm gonna do a new JSON object of this JSON string, okay? And I'm gonna put this into a local variable, call this JSON object. Okay, now I have a JSON object, which is a presentation of this JSON blob, right? Now I can pluck properties from this. I can click, okay, what's the name? What's the personal name? And uh, we need the ID, 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 what's the ID? Okay, I have key and uh, the key has the ID. Let me, let me actually take this out into a new file so that we can see really what this is doing. Right, I'm type as JSON and then format this thing. Okay, so what I have here is name, personal name, I can plug that up directly. And then key has the ID. In the key, I need to remove the slash author slash, and I'm gonna get the ID. Okay, so, okay, that's fair. Now I'm gonna go back here, and um, I'm gonna construct the author object here. I'm gonna say author, author equals new author. Okay, and then author dot set name is going to be JSON object dot get. There should be a get something. What's it called? Get string. There should be a get. So that this has an opt uh, option, which is basically like if it doesn't find it, then it just doesn't do anything. So I'm going to do opt. There's an opt string. Okay. So opt string is basically like you give it a key and then it's gonna find that value for that key in that JSON object that you have. And if it doesn't find it, it's like, hey, I don't find it. It's gonna return null or something like that. Let's see. Uh, I like that better than um, having it fail because it doesn't find that object. Uh, that doesn't, doesn't find the property, okay? Um, let me go here, JSON object. There's no documentation here. I think I'm pr pretty sure that opt does that. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. Go here, um, name, personal underscore name and key, okay? So I'm gonna get name and this one's gonna be personal underscore name is gonna be set personal name, ah, come on. Okay, and uh, this is gonna be key. I cannot set the ID to this guy, right? Because uh, I need to parse this thing, right? JSON dot JSON object dot opt string is gonna give me this guy. Okay, so I need to remove the slash authors slash from there. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do dot replace of slash authors slash with an empty string, okay? And then once I have this, I can persist to the repository. This is super easy, right? All I need to do is author repository dot save off the author that we've just created and basically do this keep doing this for every line. Okay, what's this complaining about? Is there an extra parenthesis here? Set ID is not applicable for string. Ah, I just got the wrong parenthesis here. Um, let's remove this guy, replace authors with an empty string and put the parentheses here. Okay, there you go. Okay, so now we have the processing logic for getting each line and creating an author object from it. And then it's gonna basically send it to Cassandra and save it. So what I'm gonna do is, I mean, let me actually run this with just like 10 records, okay? So um, you can use the limit method and say 10 dot 
So when you, when you stick a limit method on a stream, it's basically gonna get the first 10 elements and then it's gonna stop the stream, right? So just sticking it here is an easy way of just saying, okay, get me just the first 10 lines in the file. All right, uh, let's see, what's this complaining about? Ah, it's gonna throw a JSON exception, right? So here's what I need to do. I need to surround this with a try catch, unfortunately. Oh well, so if something were to fail, if it's not able to parse any line, I basically don't want it to break anything. Just again, I'm just gonna do a e.print stack trace and uh, move on, right? I don't want this to break. I don't want one line to break the the load of the data, right? If, if something were to fail, just keep going, right? So I'm just gonna catch it, you know, swallow the exception and then move on, right? So this is how I'm gonna do this run this for the first 10 lines. Okay, and um, let's see, this works. I'm gonna click run. I haven't printed anything to the console, so I have no idea what's happening, all right? It's gonna do something and then be done. I don't even have a message for when things are done. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, use main, so I get to the main schema and then select star from authors by ID. All right, we have 10 authors, 10 rows. Well, <laughs> we do have this ID thing over here, but it works. We are able to get this data and, um, and save it to the database, which is fine. So what I'm gonna do here is um, I'm gonna change the application YAML to just create so that it is going to create this every time. Um, works for now because I'm messing around with this thing. Once I'm happy with this, then uh, for the next table that I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on, I'm gonna change this to create if not exist. But for now, I just want this to blow away uh, this thing every time. So what I have here is, uh, oh, it's gonna run this again. Okay, that's happening. Author by ID already exists. Okay, so what I'll need to do is the other one, recreate this one. I wanted to drop existing stuff and then recreate, not just create. So hopefully this will work. It's again gonna take the first 10 lines and um, post this to Cassandra. All right, let's run this one more time. Select start from author by ID. And now the, the test data that we had added is gone and now it has actual um, 10 actual authors, okay? Um, so we, ha we seem to have an author who is not a person. Interesting, which is why you don't have a personal name for this author. All right, we're gonna get crazy data over here, right? So this is literally all authors uh, in the world, okay? <laughs> all published authors in the world. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm thinking at this point, if I should uh, post all the authors, basically remove uh, this limit and run this for all the authors or if I should do just a certain amount. The thing is, since I don't have a sense for, I can pick the books that I wanna post, right? When I'm loading book data, book is gonna depend on author and uh, I don't know what order the books are. So when I'm picking a book, I wanna make sure that the author for that book is guaranteed to be there, which means I'm gonna have to upload all the authors. So let me actually do that. I'm gonna remove, first let me kill this thing because I don't want, I don't want this to run uh, when this gets saved, all right? I'm going to um, remove the limit value, okay? And over here, I'm going to, before saving this thing, I'm going to do a println of saving author and then author dot get name a nice message for us to know what's going on here let's take a look at how many authors we have okay so this is the uh list of authors that we have okay so uh the number of lines is over here so we're looking at 85 million 75,955 authors so 
it's a decent amount it's a decent number all right so i'm going to let this loose all right so i'm going to let this run and save all the authors all right so we're going to basically have 85 million uh records 85 million data in the database you ready all right i'm ready let's do this i'm gonna click run and uh, it should start printing the messages over here. It's deleting the table, which already exists, and it's going to start creating these author records. You should start seeing the messages. There you go. The authors are being inserted, and they're going at a pretty rapid pace. Look at this. All these authors are being inserted as we speak. So if I were to go to uh, the database and do a select start from author by ID, you see this? This is happening, 211 rows already, and that keeps going. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to let this run. You don't have to insert all these authors, of course. What I'm gonna do is give you a, a selected number of records that you can use. I had to do this because I don't have an idea about what are the authors that the books are gonna use. I can say, okay, I'm gonna insert the first 100 authors, I'm gonna insert the first 100 books, but how do I know? that the authors of the first 100 books are among the first 100 authors that I have inserted, right? So I need to make sure that for whatever book I insert, the author is already available in the system. So I'm basically letting this rip through all the authors. I'm gonna have them all inserted and uh, big data, right? So while this is going on, I wanna highlight what's actually happening here. Each record is going as a partition because what we've designed is a one record partition, okay? So if you look at the, the entity that we've designed, let's get this down here. The author entity that we've designed has the primary key as the author ID, and that is a, a unique value. So it is going to have one, just one record. One ID is gonna be associated with just one record. So every time I'm inserting a record here. So each one of these lines that you see flying by, there is an ID associated with it. And what Cassandra is doing is we, we're basically taking this record and saying, hey, Cassandra, save this thing, right? So what Cassandra is doing is it's taking that ID and it is matching it to, uh, it's basically running a hash function on it. So it's basically mapping it to one of the nodes. And since Cassandra has a replication factor of three, the default value replication factor that we saw for that key space was three. So it is actually going to write this to two more nodes. So each record here is going to one node because that's what it maps to. And then it's also gonna to go to two more nodes. So it acts as a, kind of like a backup, a copy in case of one of the nodes going down. So we can technically have one of the nodes in our cluster go down and all this data is still gonna be available because it is being replicated. Okay, so this is what's happening for each and every uh, save that's happening here. And we didn't have to think about any of that, right? All we did was, hey, give it to the repository and say, go ahead and save it. And this is happening behind the scenes because Cassandra knows to replicate this, this data. First of all, it knows to map it to a node. So it's doing the hash mapping and then it's picking the node to write it to. And then Cassandra behind the scenes is also replicating it to two other nodes. So we have very strong reliability and availability in terms of where this data is stored on the cluster, right? So this is happening for each and every node, which each and every uh, write that you see here, which is very fascinating. All right, so I'm gonna continue waiting for this thing to complete, and then I'll see you on the other side.